haven't got it from you. Welcome back to Viewpoint. So we ask you today on our social media if you thought President Obama's speech in Israel did any good at all for the peace process. And Stephen J. Ermody tweeted, freedom, prosperity, increased respect for the U.S. worldwide. Ah, uh, wait, none of that happened. Well, thank you for your sarcastic yet yeah, maybe accurate tweet, Stephen, but don't worry. These Mideast conflicts, really, they have a way of working themselves out super quick. And in fact, I think this trip may have done some good, if only to shut up your Fox News friends about how much Israel hates Obama. They seem to like the guy pretty much. If you have a comment for the show, tweet us at ViewpointCTV or John Fugelsang, or use the hashtag Viewpoint, or post it on our Facebook page. Now, here's the good news. Congress worked together and passed something this week. After a vote in the Senate yesterday and the House this morning, Congress passed a continuing resolution that will keep the government up and running through September. And now the bad news. And it's bad. It's going to make you never want to vote again. Part of the bill includes making permanent four long-standing gun rights protections. That's right. The first gun-related piece of legislation to pass since the tragedy in Newtown, and it further weakens gun control. The four provisions made permanent include one that would prohibit the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives from requiring gun dealers to conduct annual inventories to ensure that they haven't lost or had any guns stolen. Yeah, they don't have to do that now. They just walk away. Another would retain a broad definition of antique guns that can be imported into the United States, not quite so egregious. A third would prevent the ATF from refusing to renew a dealer's license due to lack of business. In other words, you haven't sold any guns and your store is still open for 10 years? Keep it up. And a final provision would require the ATF to attach a disclaimer to data about guns to indicate that it, quote, cannot be used to draw broad conclusions about firearms-related crimes. Way to go, two-party system in both houses of Congress. Just a few more mass shootings, and hey, we'll have no gun control at all. You guys rock. Joining me now to discuss the battle for gun control, please welcome back to the show creator and co-writer of broad comedy, comedian Katie Goodman, editor-in-chief of TheContributor.com, the wonderful Tina Dupuy, and writer and comedian, and TV's Frank, Brad Conniff. <laughs> um, this story was so depressing, I had to invite three funny people to help me get through it. Uh, you, I didn't really want to bring in Thank Wayne Barrett and uh, Eric Bollert for this one. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know where to begin with this. I'm going to put all these questions out. Any of you guys can jump in any time. But uh, even with the media attention, the Senate hearings, the pollings, uh, how does this happen, that Congress makes permanent provisions that will weaken Gun because control. they're serving their masters, yeah. which is the gun manufacturers who are represented by the NRA. Right. Most Americans don't want these kind of things happening. Most Americans have a common sense attitude about gun control. Most NRA mm -hmm. members no, do. Most NRA them. members do, and Indeed. none of it ever gets done because these few people who control the NRA, who then control the, the uh, Congress, Get, they, they paid for this law and they're getting what they paid Tina, for. Tina, is it fair? The NRA is not controlled by its members. It ignores what its members want. And the U.S. Congress is not controlled by the people who hire them. That's right. Us, they do what they want. They're, they are controlled by arms dealers. Here's the thing. If we have no laws surrounding guns, we'll therefore have no illegal guns. So they will have no illegal guns on the streets anymore because... They got rid of all the laws. Exactly. I mean, this, but the, the worst part about this is not taking inventory. The D.C. sniper, mm -hmm. who the gun, the gun seller, Please. in this place, this was the last gun seller to be sued because Congress made sure that uh, they would never be able to have any kind of uh, civil lawsuits ever again. Uh, the D.C. sniper shoplifted his Bushmaster. Mm -hmm. Shoplifted. Yep. So that means that they had a Bushmaster in the store where mm -hmm. someone who was a criminal could just pick it up and walk out of the mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're are people who can't pass uh, background checks, who can't do these things. They can easily go in there. And there's been tons of cases where the, the gun seller turns their back right. and suddenly the guns exactly. are out. That's even... exactly what this is so targeting. So it's two so crimes, gun, gun violence and shoplifting. Right. Exactly. Right. So they're, they're, <laughs> not civil, they're not civilly liable and also the ATF has no teeth whatsoever exactly. to enforce Katie? anything. No, I was just saying, I don't even think it's so surprising besides the fact that Congress is just filled with nut jobs. I think also we have to remember that these are the people who were voted in by um, people like, remember that story a week or two ago where there was that town that wanted to make it mandatory to have a gun? Yes. And those are the people that have voted for them. So well, exactly. exactly. I, love, but I, think I love how, it, you know, when it comes to guns, their whole attitude is, we need to make things more lenient. You know, mm -hmm. we need to make it easier. And you know why the American people don't know about this? Mm -hmm. Because no one in the Democratic Party, and I mean no one, has put up a fight or right. used the bully pulp that their office has mm -hmm. given them to inform us. They did this to get a budget deal passed, to kick the can down the road for a few months, and weaken gun control laws. 
lost. Harry Reid, by the way, should get the Nobel Peace Prize because I've never seen a man more afraid of a fight. Now let's talk about a couple of uh, specific provisions. Um, there is uh, a ban on any federal rule requiring gun dealers to conduct physical inventory checks. Isn't this common sense? If you're trying to prevent guns from falling into the hands of bad people, that you want to keep track of the guns? They're not. You're not. It's just yeah. what you're saying, which is mm. that they're making follow the money. I mm -hmm. wish I had worked in a gun. I hated doing inventory when I used to work. <laughs> in, in Seven Eleven inventory the gum. It's now like they inventory. don't have to deal with any of that. I envy them. Exactly. And now, also, the most egregious thing to me is, let's say, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, I was joking about it, but you own a gun store and you're operating for ten years and you never actually sell any guns, but yet you right. still turn a profit and pay all your employees and you're doing quite fine. <laughs> hmm, I think this that. is a job for the government to not do anything. Right. Tina? That, well, that's exactly it. And, you know, if you have the, if you have no laws and the ATF doesn't have any staff, which is another issue, mm -hmm. uh, they have not had a head of the department in seven years. So they're, uh, they're a department really in name, an agency in name only. Exactly. Uh, and they're completely impotent. Exactly. And Civilly, they are completely in the clear, uh, gun manufacturers and gun sellers. Yep. So yeah, it's the golden age of arm dealing. And this means that in the future, the next time there's a massacre with an illegal gun, Congress, all y'all own it. Uh, this week, we're never going to have any le illegal guns anymore. Because they're, they're, they're all, all illegal. illegal, exactly. That's and correct. I don't want to hear anything more about how and the if, bad guys get Ill illegal if guns. If this last, if New Newtown didn't change things, what will? You know, uh, the next ten New Towns, and I am so sorry that I have to say that. Now I want to move on to this because this week the news also broke that the Senate would not be voting on the assault weapons ban. We covered this last night thoroughly and tore Harry Reid a new one, and it's become recently clear that universal background checks are hitting some roadblocks, which makes this John Boehner comment yesterday all the more interesting. <laughs> Do you think background checks and improving background checks might be part of that? They should actually do a real background check on everyone. He said it. You, like, you heard him say it, right? I you heard love him say it. That was on Jake Tapper's show, The Lead, which, if you're just reading it, you think it's called The Lead. Uh, Bader's staff later clarified the speaker meant background checks that are already required, but not necessarily they always, done. Uh, they like, always. Uh, let me get. They, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah, it's my show, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me get to the question. Do you, and I'll start with you, Frank, do you think that the speaker forgot for a moment that he was just supposed to stick to the party line yeah. and just give the correct and rational answer? I think it's, it's great how uh, whenever a Republican says something, that has common sense in it. Mm -hmm. His office immediately has to issue a retraction. <laughs> yeah. We didn't mean it. We mean we didn't mean but it. But aren't the real bad guys all of us? Aren't the real bad guys the American public asleep at the wheel, watching Honey Boo Boo, drinking Mountain Dew, and not being <laughs> the boss of the people we hired? We're not keeping charge of our inventory. These clowns in Congress. Is it a fair complaint? Yeah, that's right. They, they're not representing us, so we've then ignored them. I, I think that there's some truth to that. Uh, I think he also just he just said so, like this is, reminds me of like when you go to a wedding and the the man of the best man is drunk and he starts talking about how hot the bride is and how everyone <laughs> wants to strip her and everyone knows that we all agree, but then he's I like, totally I shouldn't have said that. Bain, I can totally picture Boehner being that guy. <laughs> right, isn't he that guy? <laughs> he's that guy in Congress, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, uh, another, but, another provision the ATF uh, that prohibits the AT, ATF from refusing a gun dealer's license due to a lack of business activity, which would make it easier to identify dealings involved in illegitimate business transactions. Now, who could this provision possibly help except the exact people who are doing something wrong or even illegal? That's I mean, right. It, it's, it's, it's a, a front. It, it makes it easier to sell a gun. I mean, that's the whole thing. It, it's not to own a gun. It's to sell a gun. So Congress that's made what crime the NRA legal this wants week. Congress made yes. crime legal Therefore, not a crime. Made they violent crime, crime by making things not... <laughs> criminal any longer. Uh, is there any good news to any of this? Because I don't want to vote again. I mean, I'm so depressed by this. If, 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 if we're so depressed we want to kill ourselves, guns are readily available. <laughs> oh this, it, I think the, the big picture of this, though, is, of course, that, you know, and I don't actually think this is true, the whole amendment, where they're trying to say, like, we want to be able to be prepared so that when the crazy, when the government gone wild mm -hmm. happens, that we, but, but they've got tanks. They've got drugs. Exactly. I mean, like, in 30 years, we're going to be like, a prime my drone from my cold yeah, dead I, fingers. I, I mean, where does that sort exactly. of Exactly. I need my Bushmaster to fight off the federal jacket right. bugs when they come in with their tanks and drones okay. and weaponized anthrax. Uh, and by the way, Barack Obama, it's on you now. You can sign it or you can put up a fight. Mm -hmm. My panel stays with me after the break when we go to the dark side of my own Twitter account. You don't want to miss it.
Welcome back. Okay, I'm shaking the anger off from that gun story. And again, I'm happy that the bunnies aren't going to have lip gloss tested on them anymore. Uh, one more quick question for my panel. What is the strangest tweet? You guys are all comedians. Tina, you, you're, you were, uh, and you, now you're a political writer you're a, and you're an editor. What, are the str what is the strangest tweet you guys have ever received? Katie Goodman? I, I got um, a tweet at me that said, you're going to get arrested for that. Only it wasn't in reply to anything, so I had to kind of scroll back through all the things I've done to see like which thing it would possibly be. And did you ever find out? Or was it no, no. I, it, please tweet me again and wow. let me know. Wow. Okay, so I know what you did last tweet cycle. <laughs> I don't know if it was like a music video or a stand. Wow. Or <laughs> Tina, what's the, uh, the the weirdest one you ever? The, got? the weirdest tweet I have ever seen, and this might be the weirdest tweet that has ever been, uh, was uh, when Anthony Weiner pocket tweeted. Oh. You. No, just the whole internet. Oh, oh the whole internet. Two months yes. ago, he yes. pocket tweeted. Oh, he did like, it again. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Wow, poor guy. <laughs> Old habits die hard. Frank Apparently. Conniff, what's the strangest tweet you've ever received? The strangest received? I got was, uh, show us your boobs. <laughs> and I ended up having to block Pope Benedict after that. <laughs> I sent that. Um, I, I'm loath <laughs> to do a segment talking about my own tweets because it makes me feel like Teray, but uh, tonight's F-bomb is a bit different. It's about statistics and facts and how they're not always the same. And it's also about the power of social media and Twitter and how it may be making the world a better place in spite of all the spam and hate-driven Twitter trolls who still haven't mastered that tricky your, your thing. Um, a few <laughs> nights ago, we had an interview here with the brilliant uh, Zer Zerlina Maxwell about the Steubenville rape trial and the persistent rape culture in a society where so many men still don't take the crime of rape seriously. And during the interview, Zerlina mentioned a shocking statistic. 3% of rapists go to jail. That's right. Now, that's not a fact, okay? Too many rapes are still unreported, so accurate numbers are going to be impossible. But I found that low conviction statistic, sad, scary, and outrageous. Only 3% of rapists go to jail. And it's a likely reason why so many women who've been attacked still don't report it to the authorities. So I posted a link to the interview on Twitter, and we got a lot of replies from people who were appalled at the conviction rate, and people who loved Zerlina Maxwell, and just people who have Time Warner Cable and miss being able to watch our show. <laughs> Um, and then came this response from a fellow who goes by Web Weaver something something. We're obscuring his avatar pic and the rest of his name out of courtesy. This gentleman tweeted back, 100% of rapists go to jail. You are not officially a rapist until you are convicted. Now, once I stopped vomiting, I tried to make sense of his logic. 100% of rapists go to jail because if there's no conviction, it's not really rape legally. Obviously, this is as offensive as it is stupid. By this logic, John Wilkes Booth died an innocent man because even though their theater full of people saw him kill Lincoln, there was no conviction. Um, I was so flustered by this and so appalled at how this is the problem we're talking about, a culture of rape, that I retweeted the comment so my incredibly brilliant tweets could reply. I'm not the smartest guy on Twitter or the funniest guy. I do have the best followers, and I'd like to share a few with you. Maris wrote, that might be the absolute stupidest logic I've ever heard. Uh, Melissa responded with the dictionary definition. Rapist, one who commits rape. No mention of conviction being requirement in definition. But the guy still didn't get it and spent all night arguing his point to my followers that 100% of rapists go to jail. Now, Snizzle Fritz had the most powerful <laughs> reply of the evening. So the man who raped me is not a rapist? Go F yourself. And then the men joined in, which I was so inspired to see, because the only thing that stops a bad guy with a tweet is a good guy with a tweet. <laughs> King David wrote, you are a rapist the moment you start to rape. You are a convicted rapist the moment of conviction. And Breathalyzer, another man, replied, by your logic, there are no rape victims until the rapist gets convicted. You should kill yourself. That'd be great. Now, <laughs> we here at what is still current have zero tolerance for guys who are insensitive to rape, but we do not support anyone offing themselves when a public shaming will do it. <laughs> so the next time you wonder why we live in a culture that allows so much rape to happen, remember, it's because of guys like this. Guys who aren't rapists, but who don't understand that when you start to force yourself on a woman, you're a rapist, conviction or not. And I wanted to share this exchange because I'm proud there are so many smart and moral people on Twitter. And while this story proves that far too many men still don't get it and don't take it seriously, it does show, despite the depressing numbers, the kind of male stupidity that allows rape culture to continue is no match for the intelligence and decency of the women and men who say no more. And that's a fact, not a statistic.
That's a viewpoint for tonight. I want to thank my panel, the wonderful and beautiful and brilliant Katie Goodman from Broad Comedy, Tina Dupuy from Contributor.com, and TV's Frank, Frank Conniff. Where can people follow you, Frank? Uh, Frank, Twitter. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Ask him to see parts of his body. Uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good night, Mom.